Well, John Irving has been called one of the world's greatest novelists, and with good reason. You might know him best for The World According to Garp or The Cider House Rules, which he won an Oscar for, or one of my, one of my all-time favorite reads, A Prayer for Owen Meany. Irving is back, and he's with us in studio with his first novel in seven years. It is a ghost story, it's a love story, it's a family story, and it spans eight decades, and it weighs in at nearly 900 pages. John Irving is joining us in studio with more. Great to have you back. Nice to see you. Uh, last time we had you on the store was for the 40th anniversary of The World According to Garp. Uh, this is your first new novel in seven years. Uh, I just want to show everybody what it looks like. I mean, it's a big one. Can you set this up for us? We have Adam, who is uh, Rachel's one and only, as she's described, one and only son. And there are a few ghosts in here. Yes, there are. Um, yeah, yes, there are. I, um, uh, it's a ski story. That's the, that's the mildest uh, way I can put it. Um, it's a love story. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a ghost story. And the family equation, um, an elusive mother with a history she won't uh, readily divulge, mm -hmm. a missing biological father, uh, should be a familiar territory for many of my readers. Mm -hmm. but, but from that, beginning, which is familiar, and which many readers of mine will know is also mostly autobiographical, uh, the equation changes, and it becomes uh, a very uh, different story. It's not the first time that the um, LGBTQ community is heroized in a novel of mm -hmm. mine. But in Adam's family, um, he's the only straight person in it. In his extended family, I'm counting two, including his cousin and his cousin's uh, girlfriend. Um, his family is queer, mm -hmm. but in his family, Adam is the odd one. Um, and no surprise, um, the straight guy is the most badly behaved sexually of every member of his family. <laughs> and like all my novels, but this one I think more so, there is a sizable fear for the vulnerability of these queer characters in a world that is still hostile Mm -hmm. um, and intolerant of sexual differences. Um, there is a sense of something bad potentially happening. And it's no surprise, in I'm a, a worst case scenario writer, um, something will, something, something does. I wanna ask you this, this is our last question, John, but I wanted to ask you this one, it's really important. The world, it feels like, is finally catching up to things you've been writing about for decades. Uh, you have taken on issues like sexual intolerance, sexual identity, you've been highlighting trans light rights. Does it feel like society's finally catching up to the stuff you've been exploring and writing about for so long? Well, sadly, um, it, it, it feels like society, um, uh, the U.S. in particular, uh, is going backward, uh, mm -hmm. is repeating itself. If you look at the state legislations uh, in Republican states that are passing uh, not only uh, anti-abortion uh, anti legislation, um, but legislation that is targeting the LGBT community, the banning of books in schools and libraries on the LGBTQ subject. Um, for what purpose? To make trans, gay, lesbian kids feel more isolated and alone than they already feel. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the cruelty of the pushback against anything progressive, against everything tolerant, mm -hmm. uh, is, it's at an all-time low to me. Um, 
So I, I don't think it's so much that my novels have political foresight. It's, it's more the case that my birth country is going backward. John, we have to leave our conversation there, but so much to explore in the book, and great to have you back here in person. The book is called The Last Chairlift. Thanks Thank so much, you. John. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.